Hi, it's Barry Neal here. I'm a professional hypnotherapist and I've been an NLP and hypnotherapy trainer for over 30 years. Over the years, one of the questions I'm often asked is, how does hypnosis work? Um, you know, most people, when they think of hypnosis, they think of stage hypnotists making people quack like ducks and things like that, but not necessarily understanding how hypnotherapy, actual real therapy works. Well, to understand that, first we need to look at what is hypnosis. Hypnosis isn't some weird altered state of consciousness and it has really nothing to do with relaxation although it's often portrayed as that way. So the people aren't asleep, they're using their imagination and probably one of the best descriptions of what hypnosis is comes from a researcher called uh, Theodore Sabin and he said hypnosis is a suspension of disbelief and believed in imaginings. Now, what on earth does that mean? Well, have you ever watched a film and got so caught up in the film that you kind of forget that you're watching a film and you start getting excited when it, the plot gets excited or you get sad when the dog dies? That's what's happening there. You've suspended the disbelief and you start to believe what you're imagining. You know, if you watch Superman on TV, you have to suspend the disbelief that a man can't fly, right? But within 10 minutes, you're right up there with Superman flying. You suspended the disbelief and you're starting to believe what you're imagining. And so this is really what hypnosis is. Now, this is perfect because that's also a description of how clients create their problems. A client will, if they say you've got a client who's got anxiety, they will start to imagine something in their future turning out badly. And as a result, they feel bad they get this visceral reaction to what they're imagining. And what they're forgetting is they're imagining it. And so they're believing what they're imagining to be true and their body is responding as if that thing is actually true. And that's why they get scared and they get anxious. The person who's scared of flying, for example, they imagine, I don't know, the plane crashing. Well, if you imagine the plane crashing as if it were actually happening and you forget you're imagining it, you're going to be scared, right? Because that's what the body would do in that situation. But people who've got a phobia, people who've got anxiety, at that moment in time, they're forgetting that this is all happening in the imagination. And they point to the object outside of them and say, no, no, it's that. It's the plane that's making me anxious. It's the dog that's making me anxious. And this gets us to another point then. Because what is the brain doing? Well, according to one of the top neurologists and researchers on the brain, Lisa Feldman Barrett, the brain is not a reactive machine, but a predictive organ. What does she mean by that? What she means is the brain is constantly making a prediction about what thing, what something is gonna happen and what things mean. It does this all the time. We think we're interacting with the outside world and we think it's things outside of ourselves that are triggering us. But it isn't. It's the brain making a prediction. I don't know if you, any of you have ever played sport or if you watch sport on the TV, like if you watch baseball or if you watch tennis. If you watch tennis, say for example the men's Wimbledon final, the tennis player at that point, when he's serving, he's serving that ball at around 150 miles an hour. That is far too fast for the human eye and the brain to work out where that ball's going to go. However, the person on the end, at the other end of that, tends to knock it back. How do they do that? Because the brain's making a prediction as to where that's going to land. And so this is the predictive nature of the brain. So the brain is not seeing the outside world. It's predicting it. And so when we're doing this, when we, we're looking around, we, we are sure that it's the outside world that's triggering us. It's the plane that's making me scared. It's the spider that's making me scared. It's none of those things. If it was the spider, when you think about this, if it was the spider that was making someone scared, then everyone on the planet would be scared of spiders, right? Because it's the spider that's making people scared. It's the same with the plane. If, 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 everybody, um, if planes were making people scared, then everyone on the planet would be scared of planes. That's clearly not the case. So you get two people sitting at a major airport and sitting next to each other. One person's totally relaxed. The other person's com 
completely freaking out, going, oh my God, oh my God, the plane's gonna crash. It's not the plane that's causing the problem. The plane's just being the plane, right? It's the predictive nature of the brain that's happening in that person. They are imagining something going to happen. And because they're imagining, they're forgetting they're imagining it. And the brain makes that prediction based on what they're imagining. And so they get scared. Well, this is great because that's exactly how hypnosis works. It's exactly how hypnosis works. So what we do with hypnosis is we get someone to imagine something differently. We get them in hypnosis and then we get them to imagine something differently. And we do it to such an extent that you kind of forget that they're imagining. And just for a moment, they start to believe what they're imagining. And at that point, there's what's called a prediction error in the brain. The brain goes, wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. I'm thinking of the plane crashing and now I'm relaxed. Why am, am I relaxed? Prediction error. And so what then happens is the change becomes possible. If you can get the person in hypnosis to imagine the thing differently, whatever it is that's causing them a problem, and they start to imagine it to a point where they forget they're imagining it, then there'll be a prediction error and the brain will then update. And that's what causes change. Because then what happens is something called memory reconsolidation. And this is really the basic understanding of all th how all therapies work, is that there is memory reconsolidation. And so when that memory goes back from short-term memory, back into long-term memory, it goes back with the updated information and the new prediction. And it rewrites the prediction. So this is how therapy really works in hypnosis. It's not that we're magically programming the unconscious or the subconscious mind. No, no, no. We're rewriting the prediction. And this is how it works. So I hope this has been some information for you. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. And maybe check out the membership area as well, because there's loads of videos in there on really advanced levels of hypnosis work and NLP change work. So I hope to see you soon.